IHTM Sports. A welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Tomahawk Stadium and tonight's contest between the Indian Hill Braves and the Finneytown Wildcats. I'm Tony Harris, along with my uh, partner, one of my closest personal friends in the industry, Brian Shaw, <laughs> bring you tonight's action. So you really dress this up to call it an industry. Uh, volunteer work is an industry, there's no question. Hey, so what a difference a few weeks make. Uh, last time we were here, playing Marymont Braves at the tipping point of the season. Off to an 0-4 start. We're talking about, hey, you know, if they can get a win tonight, uh, they got a chance to run through some of this schedule and get themselves toward 500 and then uh, build from there and see what happens. And with the expansion in the playoffs, have an extended season, you know, all the things that we were hoping for. Voila, here we are tonight with an opportunity to get to 500. And... Uh the uh, uh, Finneytown uh, as well. Finneytown comes into this game at three and four. Uh, they uh, they played an unscheduled game last Friday night against Don uh, uh, Prep School, and they won 22 to nothing. And the, uh, the so they're coming in at three and four as well. And uh, uh, but uh, the Braves have a lot of confidence in in what they're doing. Last night or last week was a. A nice victory over uh, Madeira, over yep. at Madeira, and uh, uh, hopefully the Braves can keep that momentum. We, we thought we might have a little bit of a quarterback controversy uh, in that Johnny Potagel, who's played so well for the Braves uh, during this winning streak, and Ty Thornton, who's been the star quarterback who's been hurt for a few weeks, but uh, Ty, unfortunately, is still down. Um, he's in street clothes today and, uh, and won't be able to, to see any action. Hopefully he'll be healthy here for the next uh, week or two and hopefully for a run in the playoffs. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Johnny has played exceedingly well these last few weeks. And um, um, I know that first four games, I mean, that was uh, really a, as tough a, a first four scheduled games as I can recall uh, in quite a few years here. And we've seen what some of those teams like McNick have gone on to do since uh, since week one. Really not so much of a controversy, I think, is a question, right? I mean, it's just two different ways you can look at it. My suspicion is the Braves will look at it and uh, uh, they'll go back to the senior once he's healthy. But, uh, boy, great things to come with Johnny Potagel. I think the Braves come running out on the field and uh, led by uh, Joseph David, uh, the junior uh, leading the team out uh, with uh, John Potagel right behind him. So a uh, uh, little bit of a change there. Usually the seniors are running out there with him. And uh, uh, Joseph David, who's played uh, terrific this year, uh, gets the, uh, the nod tonight. Well, Toe, um, you mentioned Finneytown with uh, three wins and Don's prep. I thought that was all basketball, man. I guess they got some other stuff going on down well, there, I, huh? I, I believe they dress 15 players. Okay. And uh, it, uh, uh, they, they obviously struggle, and uh, Finneytown took advantage of that. Sure. Um, well, we get to this, uh, you know, every year, whether it's uh, Finneytown or it's Deer Park, and, and it is absolutely no knock on athleticism or, or talent or anything like that, but... Football is a numbers game. I mean, there's a reason, and, and there's a, a really good reason why Indian Hill doesn't schedule LaSalle, doesn't schedule Winton Woods. Uh, there's a real good reason for that. Football's not that kind of thing. In basketball or baseball, you can go out and you can struggle against a team that's um, that's got more players or more resources, more capability than you. Football, toe, you gotta get off the field. It's a physical game. When you come out with 24 helmets, uh, that is a tough night, and you think about that over the course of 10 weeks. Uh, the Indian Hills, the Wyomings, the Taylor High Schools, significantly bigger schools with 40, 50 kids on the team. Uh, that is a tough order. Exactly. Well, and, and you alluded to it, uh, Finneytown is, uh, dresses 24 uh, young athletes uh, here tonight. And, uh, you know, some of them are, are undersized and, and underclassmen that uh, maybe aren't quite ready to play yet. And uh, the Braves are hoping to capitalize and take advantage of that. Yeah, when you got numbers, if you got 50 kids, uh, chances are 
distribution is going to be good on the different types of roles that you need for a football team. When you get to 24, uh, you got a lot of guys uh, doing a lot of heavy lifting. And uh, we'll see a few of them tonight. And uh, speaking of which, and I mentioned Deer Park, I don't mean to put them in the same category because year to year things can look different. But boy, oh boy, am I excited at some point. I know we're on the road to see Nori Johnson. You talk about a guy individually that's doing some great stuff in this league. Nori Johnson's at the top of the list. Well, and the star player uh, uh, for Finneytown uh, for tonight that uh, we'll be keeping an eye on is uh, Ryan Sycam, number one. Uh, he's back returning the kick here, and they kick the ball away from him in short. And we'll have to apologize tonight. It's kind of difficult to read the uh, Finneytown numbers. The contrast is uh, a little difficult for uh, people of Brian and uh, my age to, <laughs> to, to to see quite that well. But uh, yeah. number one will be a standout. He's the quarterback. Uh, he is uh, back there as a linebacker slash safety and uh, returns kicks and uh, uh, again, as the quarterback, but be careful. He, he drops back uh, like he's looking to pass, and he'll take off. Uh, he's uh, he's a, a very nice runner if he has uh, some blocking, and the Braves hope to uh, neutralize that tonight. Tony Harris will go to extraordinary lengths to find out everything he can about this situation. Truth of it is, there's a lot that's missing, whether it's film or it's stats online about uh, Finneytown. So... Apologize well, to the fans if, uh, if we're not as familiar as we usually are with teams. Well, Sycam rolls out to his right and throws the ball away. There was nobody literally within 25 yards, and the official does a late flag uh, for intentional grounding. Uh, there wasn't anybody even close. The, the entire Finneytown team was going left. Sycam went right and threw the ball out of bounds, and they are calling it intentional grounding. So that'll, uh, that'll set the, uh, Finneytown back 15 yards, and it'll be a first and 25. Uh, Braves getting great pressure uh, on the quarterback, and uh, again, something they hope to do most of the evening. And we're ready to go. So I can't hand it off and take him down Right away for about a three yard gain and uh, a host of Braves in there on the tackle. Uh, Brian, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that the Braves are without the services, most likely the rest of the year now of Carson Devine. Uh, they're outstanding uh, offensive and defensive linemen who's, who's played such a great role uh, uh, both on and off the field for, uh, for Indian Hill all year. And uh, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a real shame that that had to happen to him over at Madeira last week. Yeah, so that's a big shame and a big loss, both sides of the ball. Well, there's uh, Eli Riggs in on the tackle along uh, with uh, Birch Carter. Yep. So um, CJ Hayden in the area right there. So the Braves have uh, have this smelled out. Uh, Sycam uh, really can't do it alone, and uh, he, he tries, but. Uh, at fourth and 30, I, I don't believe any town has a play for that, and they're going to try to punt. Gutman and Peak back for the Braves. Braves will set up a good field position. I believe this is Adam Dace as the punter. And a timeout for Finneytown. So not an auspicious start for the Wildcats and uh, Braves hoping to take full advantage of that. Until we were talking uh, off the air before the game started uh, with regard to the coaching situation here. Uh, back in 2014, when Tony R. Curie was hired here at Indian Hill, Ryan Hubbard uh, became the coach at Finneytown. He was replaced in 2017 by Mormack, the, uh, the head coach and athletic director. I thought he was uh, able to focus on the AD responsibilities. Uh, Mike Weller was hired uh, and then um, left the program this summer. So uh, the old coach is back. Uh, he's had double duty before at Schroeder, was both football coach and athletic director, I think assistant athletic director. So uh, a lot of, lot on the plate of, uh, of Mr. Warmack. Coach has got a lot going on, Toe. Well, let's hope uh, the Braves now with... Uh 
with both uh, Robbie Gutton and Antoine Peak have something going on after this uh, this kick. Here goes Antoine Peak. Goes to the right, and there's a penalty on the Braves, and uh, unfortunately, this great return is going to be coming back. Uh, Antoine got all the way in, but the uh, the referee had thrown a, a flag all the way back at the 40-yard uh, line. So I think he was just marking the spot of uh, of, oh. of where he oh. picked that up. Okay. Yeah, where he made the catch. So that's clean. Okay. All Braves right. are in for Good. six. I didn't see uh, Robbie Gutman didn't touch uh, a guy on the other side. I didn't see where the <laughs> right. where the flag was going to be. I, right. Um, I mean, he was. You know, Cinderella running from the ball, uh, but uh, that uh, uh, a beautiful uh, return for Anton Peak, uh, about a 45-yard return for a touchdown, and the uh, the Braves' offense uh, will not get a chance to uh, to come on the field here. Uh, uh, hopefully for another minute or two. Yeah, I love the fact that uh, Antoine came and made a play on that ball. A lot of times this year, Toe, we've seen guys letting the ball drop or whatever the case may be and just like the aggressive nature of that. Alex Grace booms it through, and the Braves take a 7 nothing lead. Alex Grace uh, is the backup quarterback tonight as well. So uh, Alex Grace, who, uh, uh, who handles the uh, kicking duties uh, and... Uh, uh, plays a little bit on defense as well, is uh, going to be the uh, backup quarterback tonight, and uh, we're hoping to get a lot of opportunity to see him. Until uh, we've talked in the past about different Braves kickers. Uh, Folky had a string last year with regard to extra points in a row. Uh, of course, Luke Lundberg had, I think it was 40 or 50 straight uh, extra points made, and Alex, uh, Alex Grace uh, is now 14 in the book. Perfect 14 for 14 on the season. Once again, shout out to uh, to Al Alex Grace's mom, who uh, comes down and shags footballs for him when he kicks uh, all by themselves down here, spending quality time. Well, hopefully you didn't jinx them, because uh, Mrs. Grace may be coming up here. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, here there's no such thing. There's Alex with the kickoff, and there's a short kick, a little squib kick, and... Looks like a uh, grease pig there, and they uh, Finneytown picks up around the 31-yard line. Uh, they really want to keep the ball away from Sycam. Uh, um, you know, he's a dangerous, dangerous uh, player for uh, Finneytown, and um, on a kickoff return or anything, you just don't know what can happen. And yeah, hard to tell, Toe, on that one, if that was a squib to avoid the return or if that was for possession. Uh, you know, I think an experienced kicker. Alex has, I think at Northwest, I think he had an onside kick or two trying to get back in that ball game. But that one looked like it was kind of in the middle. Sycam cocks his arm and he's running and he's not going very far. Yeah, uh, great job by Eli Riggs to get him out of the pocket. And Robbie Orr uh, there to throw him out of bounds. So, yep. uh, Yeah, Robbie same. Orr out there on the corner, great contain. And, uh, and loss of there. loss of five uh, for uh, for Finneytown, and uh, it'll be second and 15. Yeah, Robbie Orr's been playing a lot of football for these Braves. He was ready early as a uh, freshman, ready to contribute, and uh, been doing it ever since. Oh. Quick handoff, and they uh, get about uh, four yards, and now they'll bring up a third and 11. And Finneytown does not like to throw it very much. Uh, they when they played Marymount a couple weeks ago, uh, they had 40 plays from scrimmage. 33 of them were running plays, and they were down 17 to nothing in the first quarter. Uh, they, they don't throw the ball very much. Sounds like uh, Wyoming, except for the score. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Wyoming tonight, uh, Wyoming down at Marymount, taking control of this league, and really, to, for all intents and purposes, a chance to really uh, put a stranglehold on it tonight down at Marymount. And here's the problem when you let him go free, but he does not get the first down. And it looks like he went out of bounds a little short. Yeah, really good job there uh, by uh, Will Adair uh, to uh, kind of get in the middle of the field and patrol that and corral him toward the sideline. Well, Sycam goes out of bounds uh, about a yard short of the first down, and it's now fourth and one. Will Adair, we, we need to uh, uh, mention him as often as we can. There was a number change the last home game, and, and Will... Uh, no longer wears number six as what was in the program. And uh, well, it looks like a fumble. And uh, either way, it'll be the Braves' ball. <laughs> uh, Will wears number 51 now. And uh, uh, he deserves a lot of credit. The uh, 
in that last home game, uh, we uh, he, we weren't talking about him. We thought he might have been hurt or injured, and there was a, a number change. And Will is a very, very important part. He's on the offensive line now, uh, as well as uh, the defensive line. And he's he does a magnificent job for the Braves on both sides of the ball. And, uh, uh, Will, we're sorry that we, uh, we didn't acknowledge... Uh, all, all your attributes in the, uh, the the last home game, but uh, we so, certainly will tonight. So now that we're past the sappiness of it, uh, uh, no, no, I, 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 I'm looking at 51, and it reminds me of a guy that played at Milford High School back in the uh, mid '80s. He wasn't nearly as athletic or as good looking or as uh, as good a football player as this Will Adair is, but I can't remember the guy's name. He was at Milford, number 51. It'll come to me. Napoleon McCallum. No, it most certainly wasn't Napoleon McCallum. No, that, that guy was a dude. Barry Bennell. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wrong sport. Uh, and the Braves are, uh, was it an illegal uh, motion? But there's a five-yard penalty, and the Braves will start first and 15. John Potagel with his first snap now of the game. Kind of nice when you're first snap and you're up seven to nothing. Nobody in the backfield with John. Peak. And he hands it off to Antoine around the left side. And, oh, Antoine thrown well, down, but uh, a nice uh, six-yard gain. Uh, and uh, so the Braves now will be at second and nine. So John Potagil has done everything you could possibly ask uh, of a guy to come in, you know, at this park. Now, lot's been made of the schedule, and it's a, hey, this was a little different group than the first four we played. And I would say the biggest thing really is the line. When Devine got healthy and you moved to there into the uh, line, I think it's just made this team significantly There goes better. Antoine Peak. And Antoine Peak with his second touchdown of the game. A 38-yard run. And uh, it's pretty nice. Two touchdowns in uh, three and a half minutes for Mr. Peak. Let's see who led the uh, the block over the right side to uh, to spring Antoine. Not that he needs a lot of help. Yeah, nice block go. out there on the outside by C.J. Hayden. Yep. And uh, yeah, that corner not able to get out there and set the edge. Antoine getting to the sideline, and that's all she wrote. You see Hayden right there. Staying attached and uh, great job. Usually, toe, that's what it comes down to. Guy beats the first man, and then you need a wide receiver like CJ wow. to uh, to make a block. Well, Alex Graves booms it through again. That uh, he hit that one about 40 yards uh, through the uh, the uprights, and Johnny Potajo with a little bit of a, a, a bad snap and puts it down beautifully. And the Braves take a 14 to nothing lead. Uh, with uh, just over eight and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. Yeah, so as we always like to say, I mean, it takes uh, three components. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And the Braves uh, have been good at it for quite a while. This is a team that uh, that executes, and that's uh, that's good coaching. Hey, so you know, just uh, thinking back again about that uh, that situation with the uh, the quarterback change, you know, I think a lot of good things have happened for the Braves. Um, you know, with regard, we talked about the schedule. We talked about Will Adair going on to the offensive line and, and when Devine was healthy, really kind of that group coming together and getting a lot better, which was really a, a, a big deal. There were a lot of new parts to that, and that was a struggle. First four games of the season. However, I uh, do need to say something about Johnny Potagill and just how well he has operated this thing. This is a guy that... Uh, it's throwing, you know, completions. Uh, Another short about. kick. And nice job. Uh, yeah, I, I. Uh, nice job covering there's, up there. There's, just let me interrupt you, something, but there's nothing wrong with Alex's leg. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're, no, they, they just want to keep the ball away from uh, Sycam. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're kicking it short and let Finneytown have the ball between the, uh, you know, the around the 35-yard line and. Uh, and confident that uh, the defense can hold them. Well, it's, uh, you know, and we've seen it where people have done it to Indian Hill and C.J. Hayden on our side has done a really good job. I think he's fielded probably 10 or 15 kickoffs and he's probably averaging two or three yards of return. But it's in the same no man's land where all you're trying to do is secure possession. And uh, Braves putting that pressure on Finneytown here. Good idea. The rollout, Sycam has nowhere to go and now he backtracks. And now he might have some room. 
And Antoine Peak rushes, pushes him out after a nice gain. Uh, boy, about a 15-yard uh, game for Sycam. Uh, he ran probably 50 yards, uh, but uh, reverses his field, and uh, all the Braves were on uh, the right side, and uh, he reverses to the left and, and gets an, a sizable gain for, uh, for Finneytown, uh, really their first positive play of the game. Uh, Sycam doing a great job, no question about it. Robbie Gutman did a really excellent job to contain that, but guys left their responsibilities on the back end. Uh, Sycam now in the uh, shotgun, goes to pass, and oh, Robbie Orr spins him around but can't bring him down, and he's run out of, run out of bounds there. Uh, said uh, Joseph David, I think, that uh, pushed him out. Totes just like uh, close out in basketball. Chop those steps, get smaller when you get uh, toward the guy, widen out a little bit and uh, get him on the ground. Well, Sycam is a slippery one though, Tote. That's a, that's a really good athlete. No gain. Sycam's uh, uh, listed at 5'11", 180. Looks taller from here. Back to pass. And four Braves surrounding him. He throws the ball and uh, to no avail. Uh, see, that's Adam Dace that uh, he threw the ball to, had him come back for it and, uh, and dropped it. But uh, if he had caught it, uh, it would have been for no gain. Adam Dace, good baseball player. As was his brother. Uh, was a nice player for him last year. I think Ryan Dace, I believe, was uh, his brother's name. Still is. Yeah, a few wrestlers on this team, mostly wrestlers, a uh, couple basketball players. Back to pass again. And overthrown. <laughs> two two receivers in the same <laughs> area. Yeah, I, I don't believe that was by design. Well, the funny thing is, it uh, looks like Robbie got caught up and... Uh, Antoine's back there, and um, we talk about it all the time in sports. If one guy can guard two, that's uh, that's not what we're looking for. At fourth and ten, uh, Finneytown comes out to punt. As men, we have uh, yeah, fourth and ten here, Toe. Gutman and Antoine Peak. I have a feeling they'll try to kick it away from Antoine this time. And it goes out of bounds. It looks like Braves will have it outside the uh, 30. Oh, he did not spot that 25. No, he's coming back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so I was talking about um, Johnny Pottajill, though, uh, before we went uh, to that other possession and really done all that you can ask a guy uh, to do and really the strength, and it, it kind of shows what he does. And I, I think the Braves are in really good hands the next two years at the quarterback position just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. You know, Johnny's not gonna beat himself. He's gonna make you beat him. And uh, nine touchdowns, only one pick. Only one guy in the CHL, uh, the quarterback out at uh, Reading, is in that category with regard to, uh, to not turning the ball over. He's done a really good job and got a lot of people involved. Out of jail to peak. And Antoine's going, oh. A uh, nice, uh, nice uh, bring down there by, and we can't. Uh, that was, uh, I think that was Sy Ryan Sycam. Sycam. Yeah, yeah. Love it. One of those uh, two-way quarterbacks. Not wow. seeing enough of that, though. We saw it with Dortson uh, when Mary Ma was here, and there are a few guys. Uh, Quade Hewer over at Wyoming does it. On Breitenbach at Madeira. Yeah, yeah. So it's a two-yard gain for Anton. Maybe three, and here comes Johnny. Boy, on the Chris. run, beautiful pass to Cooper Weiler. And a first down and then some. Johnny Pottajel is so athletic and he, he throws the ball on the run uh, so well. Uh, actually, maybe even better than when he's dropping back. But he made a play against Madeira, uh, with Madeira last week when there was a, he was, you know, Johnny's also the punter. And the ball was snapped over his head. It was, 
you're just going to fall on it. And he picked it up and started to run. And in mid-run, he kicked the ball. Wound up being about a 35-yard punt, which could have been a disastrous play. And I just, uh, just marvel at what he's able to do. It's a nice pass out in the flat. Luke Folke. And another first down for the Braves. Yeah, so it really is um, something that I think a lot of his peers really could take a look at Johnny and, and you know, gain a little bit of insight from, from what he does and how he does. I know he's very athletic, and I agree with that. But, but the thing that really, for me, distinguishes him, especially when he's playing against older players, is just from a size standpoint, et cetera, is just how he uh, mentally processes things. Beautiful throw. Out there, is that Folky? I believe it is. He goes back to Luke. Uh, that's two plays in a row for Luke and uh, about a uh, seven-yard gain. And so that's Maybe a perfect example six. of what we're talking about there, just getting the ball out on time. You know, that throw was all about not arm strength, not athleticism, just getting the ball out on time, knowing what you're doing with it, what you're looking for. And uh, really good job there. He it, Over these last uh, few games, this has been really, really good experience, not only for him, but for There's the rest of the guys. Luke Folke again. <laughs> well, he bumps into C.J. Hayden. And uh, The Braves really uh, have Finneytown on their uh, on their heels right now. Uh, they can, uh, you know, Potagel is able to throw it. He's able to uh, to hand it off. Nice pass. Oh, and that was to Robbie Gutman and uh, uh, tough play just off his hands. Yeah, another ball that was out on time, Toe. Uh, you know. Well. It's a long throw if you don't throw it early enough. The, uh, Robbie Gutman's had a couple terrific games. He and uh, Potagel seem to be on the same page. They uh, uh, Last week, uh, Robbie had uh, nine catches. Uh, the week before that, he had 12. Um, 21 catches for like 330-odd uh, yards uh, over the last two games, and uh, that was his first throw tonight. There's Antoine Peak, and uh, down to the uh, five or six yard line, and uh, the Braves have another first down. So good to see the aggressive nature Antoine's bringing to the game tonight, and what he's done over the last few weeks, finishing those runs and not just taking hits. Absolutely love it. Uh, he's he's dishing out the punishment. I I don't think uh, Finneytown wants any Pete any. Uh, more of uh, him than they've already seen. Uh, Antoine has scored the first two touchdowns already tonight, and the Braves on the six-yard line, and Antoine to the right of Johnny Potagel. <laughs> wow. Oh, there's Luke Folke. Beautiful. Uh, kept his toes in, in, uh, in the end zone and not out of bounds, and the Braves score again. Yeah, so how about Johnny able to, we're gonna take a look at the replay here. <laughs> it's fine. Well, but how about a Johnny Potagel buying some time here and watch Folky set up shop over there and give him a target. Kind of like in baseball, if there's a ball past the catcher and you gotta set up on one side of the line or the other, obviously he's gotta be in bounds, but goes right over to the line and sets up with an easy target. Great throw too. Right-handed quarterback going to his left, able to square his shoulders and fire. Well, the Braves are forced to call a timeout. I think they were a man short on the extra point, and uh, Coach Acuri not very pleased. Yeah, we were just bragging on him, Toe, about execution and good coaching with regard to uh, to these details within the game that matter a lot. And hopefully we'll be in a, a playoff game that uh, it'll come down to an extra point or a field goal or whatever. But uh, the Braves have done a great job. It, it certainly helps if you have 11 out there. So Alex Grace... Ready to kick. Oh. Oh, wow. How about that? And the Braves go for two and they make it. Riggs. Beautiful. How about that? Uh, 
Nice pass. We mentioned that Alex Race is the backup quarterback and uh, looked awfully, uh, awfully sharp right there. So take a look at this. He really led him an athletic uh, play there by Riggs to corral it. That was not a bad snap. That was uh, that was intended. And, well, uh, it kind of explains the, the 10 guys on the field, Toe. Yes. Yeah, I bet the kids were excited to get out and run that thing. So the Braves go up uh, 22 to nothing with uh, just over seven minutes played so far in this game. Uh, so, you know, and, that, and people might say, hey, first quarter, uh, we're going for two in a game that's getting out of hand already here. Uh, I think you're trying to give people things to think about. You know, you look down the road and you want to have things on film that somebody may just spend five minutes in a practice going over. You know, coach may spend 10 minutes in finding it. They might spend five minutes in a walkthrough on it. And it's something else they don't get to. And if it comes down to playoff game and you're playing a Clinton Massey or somebody like that, hey, if you can make them spend some time in preparation, it can help you. No disrespect to anybody. Well, Alex hits it a little further than he had the previous couple, and Finneytown picks it up, and they're brought down immediately. Ethan James. James, nice tackle down there on the uh, on the 30. So uh, the Braves obviously uh, are, are intentionally keeping the way from uh, Sycam and uh, not giving him an opportunity to return. And uh, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of help right now. Yeah, and this is what we're talking about, Toe. You know, you, you wouldn't really notice it quite as much in baseball. I guess if a pitcher couldn't get some outs and the guy's throwing 200 pitches, you know, to try to get out, you know, of an inning or whatever, you might notice it. But it really is not the same as when you're physically outmatched in a football game. Well, speaking of baseball, Brian, um, Indian Hill hired a new baseball coach uh, a week ago, uh, a gentleman by the name of Kerry Daniel. Uh, and... Uh, Coach Daniel is going to be with us in the third quarter, and uh, uh, we'll spend a little time with him uh, talking a little baseball. That sounds great. And the so speaking of baseball, I mean, have you been watching any of this this postseason? I know they just started it, but boy, I tell you what, there's been more drama, more great games. Well, they call the Braves for offside. Um, I saw some movement, but yeah, I didn't see any contact. Sycam so hands it off to the fullback, and uh, he's stacked up after a uh, about a two, two and a half yard gain. But that'll make it a, a short uh, field for uh, for Finneytown now to be second and three. Air Jordan, Joseph David, absolutely. Uh, so he's had some year. He really has, and uh, great personality and just great uh, teammate and presence. Made a lot of plays. Uh, again to the uh, the fullback, and he's just a little bit short. So I think we're going to have a uh, third and a long one or a short two. Right. And so what I think what you're seeing here more than anything is just a, a, a limited playbook. You know, if you don't if you don't have the guys, you don't have the the different things that you need to run an offense. You start to to compress a little bit. So it becomes a little bit predictable, and um, you know, Braves uh, really clogging that line. Third and two. And we'll see uh, what Mr. Sycam decides to do here. He rolls out, and he gets the first down this time. So I remember last time uh, he had that opportunity, he went out of bounds a yard short, extended himself a little bit, and... Uh, Finneytown has a uh, has a first down. So he's an active guy, no question about it. This uh, this Finneytown team uh, relies on him as it looks like from just what we've seen here the first few minutes more than any team I can think of. Relies on an individual player, so. <laughs> first and 10 from their own 40, Finneytown with three wide out to the right, and it is a passing play. Joseph David runs Sycam out of bounds, and that's a, about a six or a seven yard loss. Yeah, David doing a great job. Also, Robbie Orr getting in there once again and uh, did a really nice job of staying down and uh, forcing him out of the pocket. 
Well, yeah, it's, it's another case of being behind the sticks. I mean, it just makes it just exasperates the whole thing. Well, especially when you don't have a, a real strong passing game. Um, the defensive backs for the Braves are all doing a really nice job, uh, but uh, Sycam really doesn't have a chance to uh, to look for a secondary receivers because uh, he's he's on the run. And another timeout for Finneytown. That's their second of the half already. And uh, the Braves will huddle as well. So that's pretty exciting news having uh, Coach Daniel stop yeah. by. Tell, you know, tell people a little bit about it. I know uh, this is a football telecast, but gosh, baseball season will be here before you know it. And some of these Braves uh, football players uh, also play baseball. Oh. Well, and maybe some of them that haven't will want to. Uh, Coach Daniel is a winner. Uh, he's uh, very well connected in baseball circles uh, around Cincinnati. I mean, he he has more uh, contacts than than Bausch and Loam. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, uh, he's just a great winner. He's uh, he's coached a number of different places during the summer uh, as well as during high school and. Uh, uh, Cincinnati Baseball Club, the CBC, is uh, he's the founder of it, and uh, they have uh, 40, 45 teams at different age groups, and a lot of kids have gone on and and further their career in college and beyond uh, through CBC and through Kerry Daniel. Uh, he coached at Wyoming for a number of years and uh, led them to several league championships and. Uh, so it was a big win, not only to get Kerry Daniel, but also to get one away from Wyoming. Sycam drops back and now he's gonna run. And Joseph David again uh, is there and they, uh, he gets out of the original line of scrimmage. Uh, he's run out and now it'll be third and 10. So that might be the best play in high school football. If you've got a good athlete, Anytime there's a break and contain, um, and you get a guy out there in space making plays, and this is a guy that, that can do it, uh, that, that honestly, that is that's not a bad play. Just drop him back, get him deep enough so that guys start to come up field, and uh, you know, all of a sudden you have a contain issue, and uh, you got a guy running around as a as a superior athlete. Well, a third and twelve, he went out a little. Uh... Uh, before the uh, original yard marker. So third and 12. And uh, Finneytown has two split out to the right, two to the left. And Sycam now is in, in the hole and boom. C.J. Hayden on the tackle and uh, Eli Riggs and, doing a really good job of uh, stopping him from getting to this sideline. C.J. able to come in from the backside. Sycam is a little bit frustrated with his uh, his line and his uh, his blocking or lack thereof, uh, and it's expressing himself to uh, some of his fellow players. It's uh, it, it's tough. I mean, Finneytown's uh, it's uh, you know, Brian they it, they haven't won a league game. Assuming this goes as scheduled tonight, with the Braves up 22 to nothing, but this will be Finneytown's 50th 5-0 consecutive loss in CHL play. Yeah. Yeah, you know, something for athletic directors, I, I really do believe to think about. Um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, just as a parallel, my son plays basketball in a uh, collegiate conference um, that Johns Hopkins is a member of. Johns Hopkins doesn't play lacrosse against those other schools. Uh, they play lacrosse in the Big Ten, uh, which is, uh, as you know, one of the Power Five uh, Division One conferences. They play basketball in a D3 Centennial Conference. And, and there's nothing wrong with teams, you know, kind of being a participant and a league member and not necessarily being in there. And I think if you don't have the numbers, I think it's just irresponsible for us to, to put kids in this position. And, that, and that's not anybody in particular. That's just as a whole. But, you know, the CHL, I mean, you've got Wyoming, Indian Hill, and Taylor, which are all significantly bigger. And, and it really would be akin to us going and, and putting our kids in a position where we schedule LaSalle or Wenton Woods. And you can say, boy, that's exciting. Go see if you can beat LaSalle. See if you can beat Wenton Woods. Well, from a number standpoint, football is all about numbers. And the problem that you have there is you, you have the problem of injury. You see it all the time when MAC schools go to play SEC schools in football for a paycheck and they come out of there and they're missing three or four guys the rest of the season. I mean, it's just not, it's not something you want to get involved with. 
Uh, Potagel has the ball in the uh, Braves 30, hands it off to Antoine Peak, and he goes around the left side, inflicts a little bit more punishment, and uh, gets down to the 18. In addition, Toa, most important, I mean, you, you do, you just want these kids to to grow from this on a, on a you know, a maturity level. And, and as a young man, you want them to, to learn some lessons. And it's really hard to learn lessons. I mean, what is a coach supposed to talk to them about at the half? You know, what, what, what are you trying to do? You're trying to stay with stuff. You're trying to get guys to buy in. You're, you're trying to get guys to believe in themselves. And, uh, and it's really hard. Johnny rolls out, fakes the pot of gel, and he scampers himself, gets ooh, hit hard, but goes down to the uh, four-yard line. So did you see him freeze the linebacker on that? I think that was a linebacker, could have been a safety, but just <laughs> shows the ball to the outside receiver and bought himself the opportunity to cut the ball up the field. Took a hit there. Yes, he did. But, uh, but the reason he was able to get so far upfield is just, again, this is the guy that is going to challenge you as an athlete, he's gonna challenge you to make a play mentally. First and goal on the three. Johnny hands it off, and Antoine Peake in for great his cut. third touchdown of the, of the quarter. Antoine Peake having a great night. Put that right foot down, and we're gonna see it here. I like that little, uh, that little quick handoff. Got himself going north-south and toe. It's all stroke. On all three of Antoine's touchdowns, I don't believe uh, he uh, hit the turf. He went in standing on all three. And Alex Grace now uh, lining up. Will he kick? That's the big mystery, right? <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> this one not by design. Well. And uh, Alex out there all by himself and uh, three Finneytown players surrounding him and uh, gets taken down to the ground pretty hard. Um, with 53 seconds left, the Braves are up 28 to nothing. So maybe that's a good reason that they went for two uh, on that last touchdown was to, <laughs> to keep this even. It clairvoyant, huh? I like it. I like it. Well, Toe, kind of a misty night. I mean, we're starting to get, uh, I don't know, call that rain, but boy, there's, there's, you know, precipitation hanging in the air. And uh, be interested to see if that plays a part with the football here tonight. Of course, uh, Pennytown, not necessarily a passing team. Indian Hill, not in the mode right now, up 28 nothing in the, uh, the, the first quarter. Still almost a well, minute left. Not in a position to throw the ball, but uh, nonetheless, slippery ball is a slippery ball. Well, the Braves have uh, a good part of the junior varsity dressed for tonight's game, and I, uh, I have a feeling we're gonna see quite a few players we haven't had a chance to see uh, during the second half, uh, guys that normally play on Saturday mornings. Uh, Finneytown does up oh, another short kick, and it, I thought it might go out of bounds, but it winds up being a very effective kick, and uh, Finneytown player down on the 21-22 uh, yard line. And so that's the kick that I kind of thought we might see. You know, if you don't want Sycam to have it, but you still don't want to give him the ball at the 40, Perfect kick right there by Alex Grace. Yeah. Well, he's getting a lot of practice. And uh, that, uh, that was Alex's fifth kickoff in the first quarter. Um, you know, I mean, five in a game is usually pretty good, right? But that's, 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 that's in the first quarter. So yeah. um, I'm not sure who the backup um, kicker is, but we, might, we may even get a chance to see, uh, to see him. Well, you know, it's um, funny uh, you, you say that, but Luke Folke was our kicker. He's true. still on this did roster. A nice job. He was kicker yep. last year, yeah. He did a good job. Probably not a bad idea, to your point, to get him a, a couple of reps here in a, in a game situation okay. in case you need him. Sycam under a lot of pressure and pulled down. Great play. I'm trying to think who that was. It's a 40, 48. That was 48. Okay, well, that's Zach Fitzwater. Yeah, Fitzwater, the freshman. And uh, yeah, so uh, another guy who, who plays a lot on Saturday mornings. Uh, Finneytown does not have a junior varsity team. Uh, and uh, so 
Um, most of those guys are dressed here on the varsity tonight and, and hoping to get a, some action. Uh, so, Ty, I, hate to, I hate to say it, you almost want to put Sycam in a situation where he's not really even looking downfield. I know it sounds crazy, but I think that's where he yeah. runs into trouble as far as being in positions where they're behind the sticks. I mean, obviously, yeah. well, Braves able to get a lot of pressure, but I think if his eyes are in the running mode, uh, he's probably dealing with that situation really well. well I, I, that offensive line for Finneytown is somewhat porous, and I, uh, uh, he doesn't have a really a, a chance other than to look at his primary receiver. And you know, the Braves are playing tight on their receivers and not giving him an opportunity to uh, to, to look anywhere else. So, uh, yeah. good pressure, uh, good. The defensive backs and safeties are doing a great job, and, and the Braves have total control here. I think Finneytown has had maybe two uh, offensive plays that have uh, been uh, significant uh, yeah. so far this evening, and uh, the Braves up 28 to nothing here as we head to the second quarter. Well, it's interesting, you know, we think back to Wyoming, and I, again, different type of athlete to be sure, but uh, when Evan Prather was there, I mean, I can remember yeah. the Braves, you know, Wyoming seemingly would let those ends get a little deep. Um, on the quarterback, get a couple of guys up front that they could actually just get in front of. Let those, put maybe your weaker blockers on the end. Let guys shade them toward the middle, let them get up the field and come run underneath them. And we saw Prather do that to Indian Hill continuously uh, when you just break contain. And the you know, opportunity to do that, I, I'm not sure there's an answer for, for Finneytown here, but at least to not be in your situations where you're in a second and 20 We've seen them in this, you know, continuously tonight, and, and that's really where things get away from you. Well, it's second and 18, and uh, Sycam uh, ready to take the snap uh, in an obvious passing situation, but he hands it off to his fullback, and nice hit for the Braves, but... Uh, Yeah, the Braves bringing a blitz there from Robbie Orr. Yeah, that's that'll make it third and 13. And, uh, and again, another obvious passing situation, which is something Finneytown really doesn't want. Right. Yeah, I don't know many teams that want to be in this third and 14 type thing continuously over the course of the evening. I mean, that really was a bugaboo, I guess, for the Braves, if you think to the early part of the year. How many times playmakers really couldn't make plays because it was just too long of a distance? So I can. And he completes one. Uh, C.J. Hayden in pursuit of Cy Cam, and he a really good job there. Right, does a nice job, and they they pick up uh, about half of it, but not. It's not going to be enough. It's fourth and maybe five. Sorry, Toad, to talk over you there. It, really good play on that. The one thing that can hurt you is if you can't get that that receiver to the ground. Great job there by Robbie Gutman. Looks like he's got a little hitch and a giddy up because of it, but uh, big big play for his team to get him off the field. So we're going to call it fourth and five. And looks like he's going to come off and Folky's going to come in. Is there a punter out there? Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing we actually need on this play, Toe, is a center and a punter. <laughs> oh. And a uh, very short punt, but a uh, nice roll. And the Braves will take over uh, on uh, the Finneytown 47. So a 19-yard punt with no return. Yeah, Toe, somewhere Ebenezer uh, Finney is saying, this is not how we're supposed to be doing it, guys. This is not what we're looking for. Uh, Brian, I, I agree with you. I mean, 50 consecutive losses, uh, assuming the Braves hold serve tonight, and uh, um, there really ought to be something done to make it uh, for equality, make it fair, and, uh, you know, maybe look at a, a different league. This is, Finneytown has some athletes, but with football, as you said, it's a numbers game. You need a lot of good athletes. Uh, um, you know, basketball, if you had three or four, you can have a competitive team, but uh, right. uh, football, you need quite a bit more than that. Potagel on the run, thanks to Cooper Weiler. And Cooper gets to run out of bounds around the 10-yard line. 
So a 37-yard uh, a gain for the Braves. So we've talked about his ability to throw the football on the run, particularly when he's going to his right. And, um, man, he just got a really steady head and uh, really good delivery. A nice play there by Weiler. And Not only with the catch, but to get upfield. Yep, run yards after catch, too. And I, uh, I actually had Cooper out at the 11. I had him at the 10. Let's see what uh, Johnny has to store for here. Antoine Peak. Here he is for another touchdown on his feet. And uh, again, the. Uh, Let's take a look at this one here, too, Tom. Let's see who opened it up there on the left side. Well, there was nobody to open up. Uh, it was. Uh, he was as uh, open as your fly, Brian. And he was uh, wide open, and uh, the. Uh, you made me look, too. Uh, that's uh, Antoine Peake's fourth touchdown of the first half. Yeah, Ty Kendall with a really nice block there, taking a, uh, a guy that's over 300 pounds. And back on the horse here with the Braves' extra point team. All right. So the Braves take a 35 to nothing lead. So the all-time series, I was just looking at this, uh, all-time series between these teams, the Braves lead at 35 to eight, where you know you say, hey, what's the big deal? But uh, Braves have won every game since uh, 2011. And really that's the, I think the crux of the issue, So You know, that Winton Road area is uh, very familiar to me. And really, you know, for Finneytown, a lot of the athletes I know, you know, my son's age area, you know, guys four or five years ago, we're heading uh, up Winton Road to Winton Woods High School, open enrollment high school, you know, right in the area. And you got an opportunity to go out there and, and be a part of that program. And it's a really good Division II football and Division I basketball program. And uh, it's just, you know, in this day and age where guys are able to pick and choose and make decisions about things, um, you know, this is, a, this is a proud community. This, this Finneytown... Uh, area, Gosh, you think back uh, over the years, this was in the home to a lot of things that we enjoy every day uh, that were developed at Procter & Gamble, our families that lived in Finneytown. Short kick, and the Braves come down, and we are now uh, on a running clock. Yeah, yeah, first, um, first to half running clock. It's so, you know, just, I mean, thinking about the Finneytown, this is a program that in the mid 70s and the early 80s won three state titles in soccer, you know. Uh, it's the home of uh, Amanda Borden, the uh, the gymnast, the 96 uh, gold medalist, uh, you know, this is uh, a place where uh, there's a Pringle drive for Pringle potato chips developed there. Olean, the fat substitute uh, by a guy in uh, Finneytown. Uh, the hourglass shape of the diaper toe. I know that's important to you. It was at one point, and it soon will be again. I mean, that's another thing, you know. And uh, I mean, these are these are really, really. It's a really, really good community, and uh, it's, it's just tough from a number standpoint. A nice little run there to the right, and uh, and the best Greek festival. Oh. If you like Greek food, toe the best Greek festival that you'll go to in this area. If you're not in Detroit, up at Greektown, you want to be over on Winton Road for Greek food. So, of course, you remember just, it seems like yesterday, Darius Baisley playing the first two years of his high school career at uh, Finneytown and Kemar Morris doing everything he could to uh, make him happy and keep him there. Braves in hot pursuit of Sycam and uh, yeah, nice job like there by McClung. McClung. Yeah, McClung making that tackle out in the open field too. Yep. And, Give uh, him credit. That's uh, that's a lot of athleticism there shown by McClung. As we, they they want to get Sycam out on uh, on a lineman. That's that's an unfair advantage for Finneytown, but uh, Garrett uh, not having it. Uh, nope. <laughs> So that'll make it third and five. Baisley, of course, you know, spent the next two years at Princeton High School and then uh, spent a year away from basketball before being drafted, ultimately getting to the Oklahoma City Thunder. And um, 
now a starter in the NBA. Finneytown. Sweep to the right and a first down for Finneytown. And they're going to have a tough penalty on the Braves right there. That's just a good open field tackle. Two guys running top speed and one just happened to hit the other one in a place you can't hit them. Hitting them up high a little bit. I think I'm not sure who that was, which Brave that was, but uh, looked like just good football play. And we've got a Finneytown player down. Is there a replay on that? We could uh, maybe take a look at. But the... So they're going to move it up 15 yards. Yeah, they're going to target. Penalty for That's the one foul. that, uh, you know, I get it when a guy's in the pocket and he's stationary or whatever the case may be. But, boy, all too often in the secondary, it's just two guys moving at a really high rate of speed and changing direction, and you're trying to make a play. And, you know, that's, uh, that's a tough one. But you got to protect the players. I'm all about that. And we're still on the shotgun here for side cam. This is it, and a sweep to the left. Runner <laughs> avoids one player, and he runs into a uh, a whole uh, coffee clutch of, uh, of Braves. Braves just doing a really good job getting a lot of hats to the ball. I'm just looking at that, and um, you know, making a great effort offensively to to try to. Get the ball down the field, but just too many guys there. Trey Carter, one of uh, several Braves in there for the tackle. Terrific pursuit. I think, that, I think that's a culture. You know, you, you got a guy like Joseph David that's just such a high-energy guy. You just imagine guys trying to match that. And, uh, and, you know, everybody moving to the ball. And second and nine, and... Uh, Shotgun again for Sycam, and he's under pressure. Gets rid of it. Great tackle. Is that Alex Grace? No, it's 23. No, that's, that's, I'm sorry. That's what we just said before. It's Trey Carter. That's uh, he's right in the right place at the right time, and he led a nice hit on there. That's uh, and, and we've got another Finneytown player down. So another play where you've got you know you, you get the ball at uh, I don't know what that was. It was like 12 yards or something like that. And, you know, another play where uh, you're going to give up something, uh, but really important to make the tackle. And another great play. Gutman made one a few minutes ago, and uh, now Carter. You can't take away everything, but boy, when you get your chance to get them on the ground, got to do it, and Braves have been doing it tonight. Now that'll bring up a third and six for uh, Finneytown. Check out the hustle. Coach Eli coming out there. Yep. I didn't. I think it's just water in that thing, but yeah. uh, nonetheless, yeah. Coach Eli out there on the spot. And he's uh, he's probably got a little thought in his mind right now. He's got Penn State coming into Iowa tomorrow. His Hawkeyes, heady stuff. Number three in the nation and uh, top five matchup against Penn State. Uh, yeah, you can see it on the screen. There's Coach Eli, the Braves uh, director of hydration, and. Uh, took over uh, for, uh, from John Schneider, uh, who kind of uh, founded that program a couple years ago and uh, uh, done a great job. The Braves don't seem to have quite as many cramps as uh, some of the, uh, the other teams that have come in here, and uh, Coach Eli and, and John Schneider deserve a lot of credit for that. Every uh, few years, I mean, people kind of come in and come out of the program. For those that don't know, Coach Eli, all Big Ten player at Iowa, born at uh, Iowa Hawkeye, hospital a son of a physician and a bunch of Iowa fans and alums and uh, decided to stay home had an offer from Notre Dame so a full ride to Notre Dame and chose to be a Hawkeye and then of course a member of the Bengals and the Chicago Bears Larry Eli giving a lot of time to this school over the years oh well, I think uh, heard a little footsteps there it was uh, Kobe White, number seven, that uh, there was a quick out to, and uh, I think he heard uh, the Braves come closing in on him very quickly. So at fourth and six, will they punt? Yeah, so I heard uh, quite a bit from the crowd here, too. That ball clearly left the quarterback's hand, went forward to get to the receiver. Yeah. Now we've got... Uh, 
Gutman's back out. Good news. And Jonathan Koffer, a uh, uh, baseball player, uh, is uh, is in here on the coverage as well. So um, nice to see uh, Jonathan getting some. Uh, have another time out. Oh, I'm sorry, Toe. Well, well, that'll be their last time out of the half. And with a running clock, it's about the only way they're going to be able to stop the clock. <laughs> no sense saving it. Mm. No sense saving it, that's for sure. Yeah, Toe, we mentioned uh, tonight uh, Wyoming Cowboys down at Marymont. And that ought to be an interesting uh, interesting game. I would imagine Marymont will hang with them for, for a while there at least. Uh, again, you know, Wyoming just a class of the league, it seems. But a couple of interesting games along the way. You know, a 10-point win at Reading, 24 to 14. And then last week had Taylor at Wyoming and beat them 18 to nothing. And so I don't know if they just say, if they save their big margins for Indian Hill or uh, or what the case is. But I got a sense that, that Wyoming really wants to work on things and try to use these games to get better. It's kind of like when, you know, teams play Moeller in basketball. Uh, they kind of come away, hey, we only lost by 15 to the state champs. Well, you lost by 15 because they rolled a tank at five miles an hour. They they weren't trying to come in with F-15s, but it's it, it just a, a different way of going about it. It'll be interesting to see tonight, though, down at Marymont, how Wyoming comes out and uh, what that game looks like. I think it's a matter of Marymont, uh, if they can hold uh, C.J. Hester to... Uh, to under uh, 100 yards because nobody else uh, seems to be able to do that. If you can hold them under 200, you seem to have a pretty good game. C.J. Hester with more than twice as many rushing attempts as the next nearest back in the CHL. That's a lot of miles. A lot of miles they're putting on that young man. Yeah. But he's up to it. He's uh, He just seems to get better and better. He got really good in that second half against well, Indian Hill with a lot of touches. Finneytown's going for it on uh, fourth and six. Now that Almost one's like back. <laughs> yep. And it another is. pass. And oh. Well. Oh. well, you know, it's interesting, Toe, as you look at the field right now, a lot of guys down the field probably saying, hey, I'm open, I'm open. Yeah, but <laughs> i got five guys I'm, I'm trying for my to get life. to you. Yeah. Five guys hanging on me. So well. with uh, 424 left until halftime, the Braves will take over, and uh, this may be... Uh, the last uh, drive for uh, Johnny Potagel and company until they, they turn it over to uh, Alex Grace and uh, uh, see who else uh, might. Uh, Noah Frazier, who's done a great job for the junior varsity, uh, is the third string quarterback tonight. So he'd have had to turn that ball like Jonathan India to get that down the field. Braves all over him in a hurry. And you're allowed to upend the pivot man in this game. Uh -huh. Robbie Gutman closest to us and has not had a lot of action tonight. And uh, he's been a critical part of what the Braves have done the last couple weeks. But Antoine Peak. Yeah, I tell you, this is going to be a running backs game for sure. Well, it's uh, I tell you, you know, you <laughs> you think about the little things that uh, that mean quite a bit. They're actually not little. They're really big. Sednick Gordon with an opportunity there to just kind of escort Antoine Peak out of bounds and, and put a hit on him right at the sideline. You're in a 35 nothing game and you know you've got a season going like this. It says an awful lot about a young man to go out there and, and make a play like that. Very impressive. Uh, Antoine with a 20 yard pickup on that and another Finneytown player down. You know Brian again Finneytown's record in the league is um, obviously a problem for them, but uh, they have won three non-league games this year. And uh, yeah. that's uh, that's as many games as they've won since, uh, I think, 2012. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, it's it's not all for naught. And uh, the, uh, you know, the competition, like you mentioned, when you're playing a bigger school like a Taylor or Wyoming or an Indian Hill, and Certainly, uh, Reading is good this year, and, and Madeira and Marymount. Uh, it's uh, uh, maybe they're a little bit outsized, but uh, sure. some of the smaller schools they they seem to be very competitive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They had a good game against Madeira, lost 27 to 19. Um, you know, Marymount 51 to 14, and uh, Taylor 46 oh. to 27. Now to the left, 
Antoine Peak breaks a tackle. And another nice gain for Antoine. So uh, the last carry was a 20 yarder. And this one goes uh, 22 yards. Yeah, so, uh, it's going to be a running back's night for sure, Toe. No question about it. So Braves first and 10 on uh, their uh, the Finneytown 16. And let's see if uh, Antoine's going to carry it three times in a row. There's Antoine Peak, and he's in the end zone, and he did not come down. So his fifth touchdown of the first half. Antoine uh, Peak getting healthy here tonight. Well, five touchdowns. That's uh, that's a nice little half, isn't it? And uh, and again, he he has not been tackled in the end zone yet. So while we got a minute, well, after this extra point, we'll have a minute. Alex Grace with another one. And by the way, that's Noah Frazier on the hole. You mentioned him oh. earlier, and he has they had a great uh, JV year as quarterback. And with a 42-0 lead here before halftime, hopefully he'll have some opportunity to uh, express himself on the varsity field as well. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's all over the place. Guy with a lot of personality, too. Very, uh, very good kid. Well, Toe, you know, you're, you're looking at this. Uh, just wanted to do um, a couple things going on at Indian Hill High School. First of all, congratulations to Ella Riggs on her commitment to play basketball at Furman University. That, uh, of course, uh, Furman University familiar somewhat to Indian Hill in the sense that uh, Indian Hill Hall of Famer Josh Cooper Went down there to play football about 20, uh, 20, 25 years ago. The Purple Palatins. How about those guys? In the Southern Conference, so um, she'll get a chance to uh, to run around in uh, Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia, Mercer's down there. Uh, quite a quite a few good teams in that South Southern Conference. So congratulations. I don't know if you saw the picture of her. She had a picture announcing it. Looked like she had a black eye. Looked like she had a little shiner there. Hmm. That was just a picture of toughness. Toughness, but nice. uh, on the on the floor for a loose ball, maybe a rebound, boxing out, something uh, like that. Maybe trying to box out her brother Eli for <laughs> breakfast cereal or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that's probably well, it. Look who gets the ball on a kickoff. And whoa. And maybe that's why the Braves were kicking away from the first. Uh, Several kicks. Yeah, interesting. I think I saw the side judge threw a, a flag on that one. The guy that was actually on it did not, but uh, there was a flag. And it just looked like it was a play that started inbounds and just carried out of bounds. But congratulations to Ella. Uh, she's been a heck of a player for that program and done a lot here. And um, that's really good news. That's really good news. Sam Weish's school is in addition to Josh Cooper. How about Sam Weish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very creative man. Well, the Bengals used to have a lot of guys that were really creative. Bill Walsh, Sam Weish. I mean, they had some Pat McAnally, Reggie Williams. They had some real thinkers on that team. Reggie Williams, by the way, so he did that whole thing down at Disney World. You know, if you ever had a chance to go down there for a tournament of whatever sport, but uh, that was his idea to put the... Uh, Wide world Put sports. That, yeah, that facility down there, and hey, why not draw families, make it a destination, little vacation time, you know? Uh, beats the heck out of playing in some of the places we've gone to over the years, but uh, the uh, Finneytown gets a 15-yard uh, penalty on the Braves to uh, that's been that Finneytown's best offensive play is uh, a personal foul on the Braves. They've had two of them so far. And they'll take over at their own 44 with uh, a minute 56 to go on a running clock and you're calling for more plays on the sideline if you're on that uh, in the booth for Finneytown? <laughs> Let's get to the yeah. boundary. Get to the boundary. See what happens. Yeah. I guess uh, Birch Carter comes off him. He must. Uh, they must have seen some blood on him or something, and uh, he gets waved off the field. But uh, hopefully he'll be back shortly. 
Sycam throws the ball. It's completed. And uh, a nice gain of about uh, six or seven yards for Finneytown. But remember, they, there's a running clock, and Finneytown has no timeouts left. Yeah, and so this is what we really like to see is the team get into a second and four or something like that, you know, second and five. Give them an opportunity to... Uh, to, to go on offense. I mean, you really just aren't playing the game if you're behind the sticks. So boys uh, soccer too might want to mention them. Uh, third place in the CHL at nine, two, and three. But if uh, Madeira can beat Wyoming this week, uh, the Braves have moved to second place. And they're calling uh, offsides on the Braves. Braves helping them out there. Almost like to see him. I, I know that gives him a first down or at least gets him close. It's a first down. Yeah, it does give him a first down. Almost like to see a team get in that second and short. Just love that for teams. Just to open up the possibilities. Girls soccer, uh, three, six, and six. Toe, they've got more ties than you do in your closet. Yeah, six ties. That's uh, Six ties. That's here we go. for every oh. day of the week almost. Oh. Now oh we see gosh. the open field runner. Look at that. And so I think the difference on that right there is just he knew what he was doing from the start. There's no yeah. eyes down the field and guys well, coming around you and you don't know where they I mean, are. You, you feel bad for the kid because he's very talented. Yeah. And he just doesn't have a whole lot of help. And, uh, you know, that's one of the few times the Braves have let him out of their grasp. And uh, he scampers and does a great job. And that's going to be the end of the half. They're not going to have a chance to run another play. And so I look forward to coming back in the second half and uh, having the folks uh, hear from Coach Daniel. Well, as we uh, as we head to halftime, the Braves up uh, 42 to nothing over Finneytown, and uh, uh, the Braves will take a, a little bit of a rest, and we'll see uh, uh, hopefully some uh, some fresh faces here uh, in the second half for the Braves. Um, they've made their point, 42 to nothing, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to see some uh, some freshmen and some sophomores that, that don't normally get a great opportunity to, to play. Get some young guys some experience and, and get both teams into some competitive situations, uh, situational football. How about a third and short, you know? <laughs> Let's see something like that. Makes your team better. Okay, well, um, we'll be back in, uh, it says 20 minutes, uh, and uh, uh, please come back and join us.
of the one and a half million students, excuse me, who earn a score in the top 34% of that group are named as National Merit Commended Students. This select group of students and the score in the 86th percentile compared to all other students who took the exam. Tonight, we recognize our Indian Hill High School National Merit Commended Students. So when they come towards me, I'm going to ask to give them a round of applause. First, it's an Isaac Fury, who is escorted by Lyle and Rodan Fury. We're going to pitch time at home, but we got to eat. Hunter Gillen, who is escorted by his dad, Brian Gillen. I'm thinking about protecting Ryan. So that's, that's my thought right now. It was a story by Tim Lou and Jimmy Lou. You know, and his athleticism has gotten him. You know, his athleticism has gotten him out of a lot of bad situations. I'm not one for pulling the guy. Tim just decided it was a story by Tim Lou. That's the weapon we got going forward. He ain't gonna appreciate it. The man is still you cannot be here tonight. Tim, 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 I don't want to see you. 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 I don't want
and uh, uh, we're getting ready to start the second half here with the uh, the Indian Hill Braves up uh, 42 to nothing over the Finneytown Wildcats. I'm Tony Harris. My partner Brian Shaw will be joining us shortly, and uh, the big excitement right now is uh, who's going to play for the Braves in the second half. Uh, our uh, we're going to be on a uh, running clock, uh, Ohio high school rules, with the Braves up uh, more than 30 points. And uh, we'll see if uh, if Coach Akuri uh, has anything else he wants to work on or if uh, we're going to get to see uh, maybe Alex Grace at, uh, at quarterback, uh, possibly uh, uh, Noah Frazier, and uh, have some other kids at some of the other skill positions take over here. Um, Braves kind of did what they wanted the first half. Uh, Antoine Peak with uh, five touchdowns in the uh, in the first half, and he scored a couple different ways. Um, and on each one of his touchdowns, he uh, was uh, 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 vertical uh, in the end zone. And uh, uh, is this? We haven't seen the stats, but his first half stats are incredible. Uh, again, with five touchdowns, and hopefully we'll see some other guys in the in the backfield now and, and the Braves uh, will be able to uh, stop uh, the Wyoming uh, quarterback who's a uh, uh, side cam who has been uh, is a really nice talent and just uh, doesn't have a whole lot of support and a lot of help right now but uh, uh, we'll see what happens with uh, with this um, also shortly into the third quarter we're going to have uh, an interview with uh, the Braves new baseball coach uh, just hired uh, in the last week uh, Kerry Daniel, uh, who uh, had uh, previously coached at Wyoming High School and, uh, and had done a, a terrific job there, and the Braves uh, feel very uh, blessed and uh, grateful to have a, a terrific uh, baseball coach. And hopefully, the baseball team will start having the same kind of uh, results that the uh, the football and the basketball teams have had here the last couple of years, and soccer as well. Now, let's see, the Braves are back to. Uh, return the uh, opening kickoff here in the third quarter and uh, let's see we've got uh, Luke Folke and Antoine Peake to uh, set to return and uh, I would uh, imagine that Finneytown will not be kicking the ball to Antoine Peake uh, he uh, he just uh, ran right over them here in the first half and I, I don't think they want anything more to do with uh, with Antoine uh, Kobe White uh, number seven is the kicker for Finneytown and We'll see if he tries to direct it to Luke Folke over on the right. 42 to nothing. The Braves haven't had a, a lot of games like this uh, lately and uh, uh, enjoying this very much. And a uh, squib kick, but... Yeah, let's see what... The refs weren't ready yet. Say so Kobe White now will kick off again and uh, maybe just the refs weren't quite ready to uh, to have them start and here we go. Running clock, we're 30 seconds into the quarter already. And they do kick it to Antoine Peak. One sets up and here we go. A nice return for Antoine and uh, doesn't quite get into the end zone this time, but uh, the Braves down to the uh, the Finneytown 38 to start this quarter. And I have with me a, a very special guest I had mentioned earlier, the new uh, Indian Hill uh, baseball coach. Uh, a lot of buzz on uh, on the Indian Hill campus uh, uh, having this gentleman with us. His name is uh, Kerry Daniel, and Kerry, welcome to uh, Indian Hill. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, I know the... Uh, uh, the campus here uh, is is buzzing. I know uh, the kids who uh, have played baseball and other kids that uh, maybe hadn't played the last year or two were uh, excited about your arrival and uh, coming out to play and uh, having you make them better and win some championships. Well, that's 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 the plan. I mean, we we, we plan to come in here and, and really change the culture, and uh, it's been exciting getting to meet these families and players, and they they seem real excited, uh, very eager to get started, and uh, you know, just for a, a, a change. Now, Kerry, you uh, you played some football in uh, in your day. Yes, yes. Uh, 
Kerry, you were uh, all city in football. Uh, was 93, is that right? 92. 92, okay. 92, correct. All right. Um, uh, you've seen the Braves tonight, and uh, you've seen uh, you've seen them over the years. It's uh, you know well coached team, a lot of good athletes. Hopefully, some of these kids might be able to help you on the baseball diamond. I tell you what, they got some good looking kids out here. I mean, they're athletic. They fly around the field. Um, I mean, they really move. Uh, you can tell that the strength and athlete, the strength and conditioning program here has been really. Um, you know, a real positive thing, and, and these kids have bought into it, and I can't wait. I hope I hope some of these kids do come out for baseball. I'd love to have some of these physical kids out there. Oh, good. There's some, yeah, there's some speed, and there's some, uh, yeah. Now, one of, uh, say, I know Jonathan Kopp for number eight, uh, uh, he got a little bit of action in the first half, hopefully get a bit more in the second half. Uh, he's a wide receiver and a defensive back. He'll be one of your players uh, this year. Um, have you had a chance to meet some of the guys? I met him. I met him in a meeting. I uh, haven't had a chance to get much one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm excited. it's coming soon. Well, there's Alex Grace with a nice catch and making a couple of guys miss, and all the way down to the three-yard line. And there is a penalty. It might be a face mask, and it is, and that'll be half the distance to the goal. So maybe we'll see Antoine Peake get his sixth touchdown of the night. Antoine Peake's a nice looking athlete. I'll tell you what he is. He definitely is. You remember he, his father? I, no, for sure. For <laughs> sure. He, he was a great. I'm sure he still is a great. Yeah, he, uh, I don't know if he can play baseball, but we can find out. <laughs> uh, he looks pretty athletic. I think he can pick it up. I, we'll throw him out there in the outfield. He'll run it down for us. I know he can hit. But whether perfect. he can do it with a bat, I'm not yeah. sure. All right, Potagel getting ready to step back. Actually, the Braves have it on the uh, four-yard line. Potagel to peak, and he is in the end zone. Yeah. Not a bad day. Six touchdowns. And Alex Grace now will... Oh, is Alex going to kick the extra point? Or the, uh... Yes, Alex will be kicking the extra point. Now, I do know Alex Grace. He played football for me a couple years back over at St. James, and he's a heck of an athlete. Does he play baseball? You know, we're going we're gonna to test the waters there. We're going to see if that if, – I'm not sure, but we'll definitely ask that question. We'll see how good a salesman you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Obviously, you, you're familiar with the facilities here. Yes, um, it's it's going to be it's it's great. I mean, when you have a turf field that you can play on, you know, every day, um, you know, the weight room's spectacular, and you know, I, I, the training staff is is, is really good. So uh, there's there's nothing to complain about here. That's good. And when uh, when do you hope to get started? Um, we're looking at getting started sometime next week with some just doing some open fields, just get the kids out, let them get you know, so we can see how some kids play and and how they move and uh, start preparing for for the winter winter time when we'll hit hard uh, come sometime around November December. Uh, we'll really start getting some some work in and you know when February comes around for tryouts. Uh, I mean these guys should should be in, in, in good shape except our basketball players. I mean they'll, they'll obviously be doing basketball but you know from from the looks of it not many of the guys play basketball they're gonna be they're gonna be hitting it hard for baseball this winter um, and they all express a, a huge interest in, in getting started sooner than later uh, um, you have a couple boys at home um, and uh, I know the, the hope and prayer is that uh, one or more of them might be playing uh, uh, in the uh, uh, the red and black uh, someday yeah right now you know we've got a Got a junior and a senior, and uh, you know they're doing well, and they, they enjoy where they're at right now at Moeller and uh, playing ball over there. And uh, I've got an eighth grader at, at Summit Country Day, and you know obviously we're in that time of figuring out high schools, and um, you know we have some we have some things to do, um, you know. But definitely he's he's excited about the opportunity and possibility of uh, of coming to Indian Hill, um, and and that, that would be great. To, to you know, that was a huge reason with taking this job is to have the opportunity for him to come to a great school and. You know, not that he's not at a great school right now, but somewhere where he can go play baseball and I can coach him, and we're, we're both kind of in a win situation. Well, that's great. So it's, it's kind of a twofer. Right? Twofer. Yeah. That's, 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 the, that's the goal. Well, that's great. And, and everybody's very excited about, you know, you obviously have a tremendous track record. Um, you know, you were the head coach at Wyoming for several years and did a heck of a job with them, and uh, you coached at Seven Hills. And, 
you know, obviously your your summer teams have been exemplary, um, and uh, hopefully you'll have that uh, be able to put that tonic on uh, on the Braves here too, and uh, help lift them to uh, to some championships, uh, not only in the CHL but uh, hopefully go a long way in the uh, high school tournament. Well, I appreciate it. You know, it's it's been it's been. You know, it's been some hard work, but more than anything, I mean, we, we don't come in and change a program, change things around if, if the kids don't buy in. And I was fortunate at Wyoming and Seven Hills and every place I've been to, to really have kids just buy into the program and uh, what we teach. And, you know, these these guys, I don't expect anything different. And, you know, with, with that being said, I I can't say that that uh, we're looking for anything negative. I mean, we're going we're gonna to have some we're gonna have some positive outcomes out here and, uh, you know, see some results sooner than later. And, uh, Terry, let me ask you real quick, uh, who uh, in the American League and National League, uh, who are you rooting for? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a tough one. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the game of baseball. I mean, every day things, you know, you just never know who you're going to get day in and day out. You know, anybody can beat anybody. So, uh, man, I, I'm... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to refrain from that one because I don't. I can't have that held against me later on. Like, oh man, um, you know. I just. I just love to see. I love to see all these teams compete and how they really turn it on in the playoffs. And um, you know, I'm, I'm a big. I'm a big component of the Reds, and obviously they're not playing anymore. So, you know, I, I'm going with. I'm going with with anyone. Anyone that 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 represents what they represent. Uh, Brian roots for the Pirates, so uh, yeah. you're, you're way ahead of him. Yeah. The Pirates, that, that's your team. <laughs> I'm deaf, you know, I'm not, I'm not with the Pirates, not with the Pirates. I got, I got a couple guys out there playing right now, and, and I tell you what, you know, I, I look for those teams first, and, you know, got a got one, uh, you know, Josh Harrison, where, oh, you know, sure. I love Josh, and, you know, anywhere he's at, I'm rooting, and, you know, any, anybody else that, that's been affiliated with the Cincinnati area, um, you know, th those are guys I'm rooting for. Oh, that's great. Well, Kerry, we're uh, we're excited. We're uh, hoping that uh, Coach Dupps uh, wants to uh, to televise a couple uh, baseball games this year too, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to see in action here uh, in this spring. Uh, cool. Just a second, uh, Coach okay. Shaw wants to say something. Hey, so we don't often get baseball opportunities here. The greatest game in the world, <laughs> for sure. Coach Daniel, just two questions. Uh, first one, just thinking in terms of if coaches a lot of times think about other coaches' perspective and they value it. If you have coaches watching your teams play, what is it that you want those coaches to take away that they say that's a Kerry Daniel team? That, that's a great question. You know, I, I think. You know, the, the one thing that, that's per, probably as consistent as possible that I that I, I like my guys to be is 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 really focused on the little things. I mean, our guys, we we go about things. We have routines, and and I want you know we get complimented a lot on our, our guys, their routines, pregame routines, you know, in between innings and everything we do. You know, I tell our guys everything we do has a purpose, and we're not taking anything for granted. So if we're just tossing. You know, catching the ball, we're, we're working on receiving the right way. When we're throwing it, we're working on throwing the right way. You know, we're hitting we're hitting in the cages. Uh, you know, we have certain things we're working on in the cages. So we, I want, I, I believe the one thing I want guys to walk away with is this, man, I mean, everything they do, they seem to be extremely focused on. And it's not just lollygag and just kind of going through the motions. Right, right. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's great. I, I don't think you can love something unless you really know it and understand it. Right. And, you know, one of the things I think kids always struggle with, so many people go fast and do things 100 times bad instead of 10 times right. And then the kids don't understand the context of why, I'm, why am I being asked to do this, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of stuff. But once they once they understand it, I think they got a better chance to love it, and then it just kind of feeds on itself. 100%. Robbie Orr with the take all the way to the house. That was a great run. I'll tell you what, that's a young man that uh, has been out of the box as a freshman, able to compete. And uh, now he's got a couple of years on him. We've got another one left here and uh, look forward to big things coming next year. He saw a great cutback line and did, did the right thing. So I says. And coach, you know what you, you got to love too is he trusted himself. You know, he, he trusted his speed and he just went right through it. Um, the last thing I had for you, coach, and this is something that's important to me. Just with kids, uh, I know you talked about Alex Grace at St. James. Love that, by the way. Um, so obviously, you're coaching all through the year. You love it. You love being with young people and teaching. That's obvious because just thinking about your last answer. As you look forward 
10, 15 years from now and kids come back to see you mm -hmm. as the coach and that relationship means so much. Just thinking in terms of what you want those kids to be thinking, what did Coach Daniel give me that endured, that went past my days as a player? Right. No, I, 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 it's it's definitely one of those things. I want these guys, when I, when I do run into them, what's crazy is I'm, I'm, I'm in here for five minutes and somebody calls my name and some kid calls me over and says, hey, do you remember me? I said, gave him that look like, hey, you got to be a little better than that. <laughs> You know, uh, and, and turns out this kid played for me. He told me his name. I'm like, holy oh, man, yeah. the kid's 26 years old now. He played yeah. for me at 12 years old right. for one year. And it's hard, man. Um, that's 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 awesome to me. You know, the yeah. fact that the, the the only thing I can ask for is if if regardless of what I did for you, you know, I I don't need you to tell me exactly how how things made you made you better, how it made you feel. I mean, I love to hear it. Right. But the fact that you took the time to come and speak to me yeah. means that there was some type of positive relationship you right. know, during that time and and not that negative thing where you feel like, hey, I can't, I don't want to go talk to Coach Daniel. He, that, that was a bad time in my life. Right. Uh, so, you know, just just the opportunity to, to see these guys and, 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 and catch up with them and see how they're living now, it, that, that's that's special to me. And to, to know that I had a part, they allowed me to have a part in their life um, and be a part of their life more than more than them allowing, you know, me allowing them. Them. I mean, they, they they affect my life just like my kids. So right. uh, just be able to spend that time. So I, I appreciate that. Coach, I could see your energy level just picking up <laughs> talking about those things, which uh, means your your mind, your heart's in the right place. Yeah. And uh, really appreciate you being here. Welcome to the program. Well, I thank, and, thank you guys for sharing sharing yeah. this space with me. I know these guys are out here working hard out there, and then some people want to hear, hear about this game, but I, I appreciate the time. Tell them to throw it back to you. Thank Coach Daniel for uh, for being our guest here in the third quarter and uh, looking forward to having him uh, be our guest maybe during a basketball game and, and certainly after a baseball victory this year. Well, we'll be out there. Thanks a lot, Tony. All right, Coach. Well, the Braves uh, may, did make a change at quarterback, and uh, Alex Grace uh, has taken over the reins and uh, his first drive, the Braves score a touchdown on a, uh, a Robbie Orr run. And uh, as you could see, the uh, Braves did a, uh, Alex did an interesting uh, kick. He, uh, he kicked it real hard, trying to hit it up the middle. It went off a Finneytown uh, player and came right back, and the Braves recovered. So um, Braves are up 56 to nothing. Again, a running clock. Uh, just two minutes left here in the third quarter, and Alex Grace with a keeper. Ooh, nice tackle. Um, and Alex gets up okay, so it's uh... And there's Coach Daniel right there. Uh, there he is. And we're really uh, happy and grateful that uh, Silver we Knight. have him on the, yeah, on, in the program, and uh, he's going to be a great leader. So, and it is great seeing these young guys have success. The last couple of minutes, just looking at uh, the things uh, to Robbie Orr and Alex Grace and all these guys out here. Uh, this is this is the future. It'll be here before you know it. So next year, a lot of these guys are going to have huge roles for this team um, outside of what they're doing now. And it's big now. But Robbie won't just be a defensive back, and Alex won't just be a kicker. Uh, this will this will and a defensive back. This will open up quite a bit for these guys. Alex Grace, nice pass. Charlie Rogers. Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes out of bounds, but it doesn't matter. The clock keeps ticking. <laughs> so that was a quick third quarter. Yep. And... Uh, Hopefully just as quick in the fourth, and uh, let's get out of here without Terry having to work overtime. Terry Conti, the uh, the Braves' uh, Claire Barton, um, takes care of uh, everyone and everything in this program and has done so for many, many years. So I'm just looking out here, and I know we're going to head to the fourth quarter. Right? Well, Braves are going to snap one more, potentially. Oh. And they're calling a delay a game. So just looking at this offensive line, this might be the most exciting part of it. Uh, Chase Lanham out on the field uh, together with Gabe Oaks. And I, I got, 
I got a sneaking suspicion that uh, when we get back here in the fall of 2022, these two guys, you're not even going to recognize them both physically. Um, I think Gabe Oaks is about to uh, about to shoot up and uh, become a monster, and um, and, uh, and Lanham's going to be really good too. Didn't Gabe Oaks have a brother that used to play here, or maybe two? <laughs> yeah, a couple of them. Uh, you could just see with some of these guys, you know, they're just about to hit it, you know, physically. They're just about, and Gabe is uh, Gabe's definitely that guy for me. I'm calling that right now. But uh, these guys, uh, you know, these young linemen that you've got out here, uh, the other one, uh, Aiden Rippey, is out there on the field. Yeah. Uh, I might be missing one. I'm just kind of go through these guys and see. But I really yeah. think this is going to be a good group. Odell's a sophomore. He's out there. Uh, but I just think this group's going to be really, really good together. It's it's kind of fun to watch them right now. Well, again, the, these guys are serious. This is uh, they've been practicing all year, and and um, they haven't had a lot of uh, opportunity to get uh, some varsity action. And uh, and this is it. This is their report card. And uh, yeah, they they they're not just running out the clock. Freshwater in the back with uh, Alex Grace. Looking for C.J. Hayden. Beautiful pass. Uh, C.J. had to come back for it. He was nobody within five yards of him, but uh, good route right there. Got to yep. the sticks. First down. Uh, the Braves have a first down now uh, on the 24-yard uh, line of of Finneytown. And uh, some wholesale substitutions. So it may seem like a little thing, but a really big thing for Hayden to uh, to know where he is on the field and be able to run that route. That was just about perfect. Sat down too, obviously, if he's uh, if he's leaning too much one way, he doesn't come back and make the adjustment to that ball. For a guy his height, that's a really, really good possession reception well, right there. We've got a new quarterback, Noah yeah. Frazier. And Frazier, the resident Fran Tarkington lookalike. Uh, you know, you watch some of these JV games, I have a chance to go and see them, and uh, Noah's just, you know, it's kind of like Dortson. We talked about him at, at uh, Marymont, how comfortable he is going back and giving up a little bit of ground and making plays, and Frazier's another one. In addition, uh, point guard on the basketball program for that 10th uh, that grade group, and a guy with just a tremendous, one of the all-time funniest players you'll ever be around. Great personality, great sense of humor. There goes Frazier rolling out to the right. Throws it up. And there's Trey Carter. Uh, Trey's already made some great plays on defense today, and he comes up with a nice reception and uh, nine yards. I don't know what it is about this sophomore class. I mean, we saw Johnny Pottagill do it earlier, and now Noah Frazier throwing on the run. Get these guys out of the pocket, and uh, they're deadly. John Copper, you mentioned yeah. him earlier. Yeah, he's, well, he's a he's a baseball player, a very fine player. Uh, Going to get a lot better with uh, Coach Daniel. Oh, handoff, and I do not believe he got the first down. I'll tell you what, it looks like the Braves are going to go for it, and that's the right call here. But boy, game situations, though. I am looking forward to seeing. Alex Grace get an opportunity from distance sometime this year. Because again, you never know, you know, you get in the playoffs. I mean, right now the Braves are an 11 seed, 16 teams in region four, or I'm sorry, region 16, mm -hmm. uh, make the playoffs. And right now, I mean, as you look at the schedule over the next few weeks. Noah Frazier gets hit and down goes Frazier, but, <laughs> uh, but he gets the first down, and uh, the Braves will have it first and goal just inside the 10. As you look toward the future, though, really would be good to get uh, get a sense of that kicking game from distance. And Grace has been so good with the extra points, and until we've talked about it before, just booming them through. Be a good chance to, to see him, you know, from 35, 40 yards, see what we got if we need it. Well, they place it just outside the 10, so the Braves can get a first down. And without Antoine Peak in the game, they might need one. Now they're in the eye. 
The up man. Yep. Love it. The fullback getting the carry. So speaking of uh, Antoine Peak, I think he might have broke a record tonight with uh, six touchdowns. Uh, one, not an Indian Hill record necessarily, but one that's held by uh, a guy most people familiar with. Al Bundy from Polk High, I believe, scored five touchdowns in one football game. It's something I've heard over the years. And Peak now has one up to me. That's, uh, uh, one was on a return uh, and uh, five rushing. That's uh, not a bad day, and considering he really only played uh, just over half the game. <laughs> oh, throw it up, and that was there for uh, Ethan James, And uh, but there were uh, two Finneytown defenders uh, that had better position. Noah with a great deal of confidence in Ethan James to go up and make a play against two defenders there. So third and six for the Braves from the, uh, the seven-yard line, and again, the... The clock keeps ticking. The band plays on. Got to love it when your coach trusts you, too. I trust you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Toe. I thought well, you'd like that. to hear that at least once tonight. Yes. All right. Frazier's going to run. And he can't get. Oh, oh, he cuts back. Boy, did he cut back. And he goes in. Yes, sir. Wow, he was running out of real estate when he was going wide, made a beautiful cut in, and uh, goes into the end zone. Uh, again, vertical. Love uh, it. Love it. I'm looking down in the crowd to see if I can see Kevin Frazier, and I just spotted him. Frazier playing here. Very excited. What a night, though. Oh, what a night. Get a reference that's like less than 40 years old. The Braves going for two. Our, our, our group, our demographic skews really young, Toe. It's a really uh, delayed, hip broadcast. Uh, delayed handoff, and the Braves do not get there. And uh, so, uh, got a minute here. Just wanted to congratulate uh, the boys' golf team on a great year. You know, over the course of the summer. Uh, Peter Shakely is going out and working on his game every day, and he's got a kid from Madeira and a kid from Marymount that he's thinking about. Who's getting better? Who's, you know, who's going to be able to take that title in the CHL? Peter Shakely finishes with the lowest average score in the CHL, number one. Wyatt Higgins was number four. And Alex Holzapfel was number nine. So the, the Braves with three top ten finishers in the league. And on the girls' side, it was even... Um, even more, they had five in the top 10. Um, and I'm sorry we're in a dark booth here. I've got this written down. Piper Iskrig. Mary Kahn. Oh, thank you. Avery Vowles. Sophie Chabri and Stella Core. All five um, were top five uh, in tow. I know this is going to come as a shock as there's a long, uh, long kick through the end zone. And, uh, it's the first time they kick long today. It is. Uh, this will be a shock to you. The girls' tennis team won the CHL again this year. Wow. It's been that way since the end of 1996-97. That's it's quite a run. There's domination. There's Ming Dynasty. There's whatever. And then there's uh, the Indian Hill girls' tennis team. And in the singles, Brooke Arrington, Caroline Brown, Hannah Pollock, uh, all three led the way for the, uh, the Lady Braves. And then in the doubles, Lexi Larson, Elsa Zhu, Casey Larson, Sarika Singh, uh, those, uh, those four uh, held it down with, uh, with regard to doubles. Boys cross country, R.J. Poppenberger, uh, third in the league. Jonah Waltz, fourth. Liam Morris, fifth. So they had top ten times in the CHL this year. And uh, on the girls' side, Elizabeth Whaley and Hayden Withers had the top two tens in the CHL this year. And just wanted to uh, to recognize them for a great job. Made the school proud, every one of them. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, players who don't normally get the opportunity uh, in right now. Oh. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> Toe, did that you throw Jonathan, a flag? Is that Jonathan Coffer? Uh, it is. That was <laughs> number eight, Jonathan Coffer, getting it all the way back. Wow, here's a replay. Jonathan, Jonathan jumps it and uh, right down the left sideline and number of flags being thrown there. Toe, I was wondering if you threw one of those out there. Yeah, a lot of laundry. Yeah, you sort uh, this out. It could take a half hour. Or so. uh, I'd be ashamed to take that away from Jonathan. He's worked really, really hard. You know, we have two uh, gentlemen up here in the booth that uh, <laughs> would love to be down there on the field. Yeah, yeah, this uh, would be in the night. Number 15. Uh, Penn Picton and uh, number 24, James LaBarbera, <coughs> both uh, very valuable players on the junior varsity that have been chomping at the bit to try to get some opportunity tonight. Unfortunately, both are hurt and uh, they're stuck up here with us. Well, Ryan Sykam still in the game for Finneytown and uh, I think thought he might have an opportunity with the substitutions to get the ball down the field and uh, ends up throwing a pick. Uh, they're calling holding on the Braves, um, but it uh, it is an interception for uh, Jonathan Coffer, and uh, the Braves will, what will the line of scrimmage be? About the 19. <laughs> Throwing the Finney Tongue ball out and the Indian Hill ball in. They told the other one tonight, I uh, was thinking about uh, Redding, it continues to play really well, and they hosted Taylor tonight. I'd be interested to see how that goes. Taylor and Indian Hill will match up later in the year. Uh, Taylor will, or I'm sorry, Redding and Indian Hill will match up later in the year. Redding will and, come here. And that's two weeks from tonight, and we will have that game on the IHTN. Yep. And so really one of the extraordinary things that has happened this year, just thinking of... Uh, uh, the quarterback, Joel uh, Steinkoen, has uh, really lit it up. This is a guy that's uh, thrown 13 touchdowns and has not yet been picked off. So uh, Redding uh, putting the ball up in the air, but uh, taking care of it at the same time. Uh, just thinking about other things going on in the league. C.J. Hester, we talked about the fact that he's run the ball more than two times the uh, more than the, the next guy in the CHL as far as attempts. And, um, you know, clear front runner for player of the year given Wyoming and, and where they are in the league. But I'll tell you, Toe, there's a guy at Deer Park, and here's a pass in again for Ethan James, and he, and he got gets it. it. Ethan James with a touchdown for the varsity. Beautiful. Great adjustment hey. to the ball by James. Uh, that ball underthrown a little bit. Two, uh, two guys out there on him. And Ethan able to come back and get the ball. And how about Noah Frazier? Got one running and one throwing. Beautiful. And I, I you know, I, I uh, Chance for, uh, Chase Freshwater uh, was wearing number 19. Uh, we didn't have that marked properly on our uh, rosters, but uh, he carried the ball in that right end uh, sweep and, uh, and gained several yards. He's had a couple carries and doing a really, really nice job for the Braves as well. And the Braves are going to go for two to go into the up back again, Toe. Yes, yeah, they are. And he will not make it. Well, uh, these young guys having time of their life right now. It's Friday night, so it's water. Yeah. Get better than that. Well, yeah. Let's take a look at that uh, fine adjustment to the ball by Ethan James. You see him with double coverage out here, and uh, again, Frazier with confidence throwing that ball out, and Ethan coming back and making the adjustment. Really in double coverage. Patoa, just talking about player of the year, and obviously C.J. Hester uh, has to be the front runner, not only you know, his productivity, but also his team and what they've done. But there's a, a story, and, and the Braves are going to go next week, I think, out to Deer Park, right? Correct. And Nori Johnson, if you get a chance to go out to Deer Park and watch this guy, uh, let me throw some things at you here, Toe. I, I know this is a CHL, but it doesn't really matter what level you're playing. This kid's averaging over 10 yards a carry. He's averaging over 26 yards a catch. He's made 88 tackles that leads the CHL. He's got a couple of interceptions, a forced fumble, fumble recovery. There's another deep kick, and boy, Grace got all that one. This young Brave's gonna have to cover. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, oh, boy. And there goes a the shutout. And maybe that's why we weren't uh, kicking deep uh, 
the first 10 times. Well, combination. I mean, you know, you got uh, a lot of young guys in, the, in there for the Braves. And, you know, Finneytown with a, a thin squad to begin with, the guys they brought are the guys that are playing, you know, the whole game. So uh, opportunity there for Finneytown. You got to love that just for the Wildcats to get on the board and end this thing on a positive note. But so uh, six rushing touchdowns, just thinking about Norrie Johnson. Six rushing touchdowns, four receiving. He's had two of them that are um, kick returns for touchdowns. And I was watching some film of, of them playing against Wyoming, and he is on the edge. And uh, backs have got it. They're just getting lit up. He, I mean, so when he tackles, he tackles. I mean, this kid hits. And I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm just kind of laughing because he's coming in unblocked, and I know the backs are probably like, Coach Hancock, can we get somebody to just chip this guy? Uh, but he's been offered by Toledo, Buffalo, Duquesne, Bowling Green, Western Michigan, and Creighton. A four-year player at Deer Park. And um, tell you guess yeah. where he's from? Um, well... Uh, the football program, they, they have Deer Park players, right? He's from Deer Park, yeah. Wow. Well, he, he's tremendous. I mean, he, he really is. And if you get a chance to go out and see him, for the Braves fans, are going to be out at uh, Deer Park next week. Uh, make sure you pay attention, number four. I mean, you can't miss him, obviously, given all that he does. But uh, from the start, keep your eyes out for number four. should be a good show, regardless of... If his team is outmanned or however the game goes, uh, he will do some things that you won't believe. And we're going to see the uh, the run back here for uh, for Finneytown that uh, uh, put them on the score. Yeah, Grace got all that, got it to the goal line. And then just you got a lot of young players that, um, you know, probably haven't been out there on kick uh, coverage together. So, you know, a lot going on there and then a great individual effort. And so that was number 27. Oh, it was 21. Oh, uh, there's. Yeah, 21, I'm sorry. DeAndre Savage. A, uh, there goes a Noah junior, Frazier. Junior wide receiver safety. They did a nice job, broke a tackle or two, and yeah. Um, unfortunately, there are only you know two disappointing things so far for tonight for the Braves. Uh, one that uh, they allowed Finneytown to dent the scoreboard uh, and put up that touchdown, and, and of course, the other one is you know Boo Shaw doesn't get a chance to go <laughs> dancing again tonight. So hey, let me tell you something about Boo Shaw tonight. Her baby boy is uh, flying in from Philadelphia, and she's driving back right now from the airport with him in the car. So for all the moms out there, they so know. She is dancing. When uh, she's dancing, you know, her heart's dancing. When, you're, uh, when your kids are in your house and you know where they are and you get a chance to feed them and just hang out with them, nothing better than that. Well, with... Uh just over a buck 40 left here in the uh, in the game and a running clock. Uh, the Braves are going to, uh, looks like, be in victory formation and uh, not try to push it any longer. So in the last 61 games, just thinking about this score with 68 on the board, it's not the only time. The Braves have scored 60 or more 14 times in uh, the last 61 games. So it's not unheard of. Well, and they did it with uh, a lot of guys who don't normally play in most of the second half. Uh, uh, John Potagel and uh, Robbie Gutman and uh, Antoine Peake, who uh, are, are the main, you know, uh, guys here on the offense, really didn't get an opportunity to play uh, after halftime. And uh, so it's, it's really not rubbing it in. You want to give some of these other guys the opportunity to get some uh, some uh, some play and and feel what it likes feel what it uh, feels like to, yeah. uh, to get into the end zone. The amount of work these guys put in on a weekly basis. I mean, the practices in football are brutal. I mean, it's just a tough road and uh, long season and a lot of off season stuff. Got to go lift all the time, put that armor on to keep you safe and healthy. And uh, all these guys that are out here deserve a chance to make a play. And they did it tonight, Toe. And for the Braves, really good night in a sense they get to 500. And now you got a chance to build on something and protect something well, and uh, look forward to a great effort next week at Deer Park. Well, and, and Brian, as you said, the Braves were uh, 
seated 11th uh, in the, the latest ratings and uh, uh, with the win tonight and, and uh, hopefully they can play as well next week against Deer Park and and then the finale, uh, regular season finale here against Reading, uh, they could maybe sneak into the top eight and and uh, earn a home game in the uh, first round of the OHSAA playoffs. That'd be tremendous. When we come back in a couple of weeks against Reading, first of all, good football game uh, we're anticipating. Uh, second, uh, the playoff picture will be closer and uh, see if Joe Edel's figured out Clinton Massey yet. I think he, uh, I think he's sleeping on uh, Clinton Massey a little bit. Well, um, thanks so much for joining us. We uh, obviously this uh, doesn't happen without uh, Denny Dupps and Steve Overberg, uh, who who may call this happen. Just a phenomenal job. They're Hall of Famers. Their entire staff here that uh, that, that make everything go. Uh, uh, if you enjoy this uh, broadcast, um, and some of you might, um, <laughs> then uh, it, it really Denny and Steve uh, and, and all the guys that work for them and that they teach are, deserve an incredible amount of credit. This is amazing for a high school production to be able to put this on. And you can hear the bell in the background, the victory bell that the Braves ring uh, after, uh, after each victory. And I've uh, been fortunate enough to... Uh, to have four in a row now and uh, hopefully make it five next week and then uh, be a nice one to ring against Reading uh, uh, two weeks from tonight right here in, uh, at Tomahawk Stadium. So thanks, uh, enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for putting together that uh, interview with Coach Daniel. Um, wish everybody well, and we'll see you back in two weeks with the Braves for a chance for a six and four season. Terrific. Uh, again, thanks again for joining us, everybody. Uh, good night and uh, good football. Exclusive coverage of tonight's game on the Indian Hill Television Network has been a copyrighted presentation of the Indian Hill High School Video Department.